Mr. Breaker? Here. Dr. Dr. Cross? Present. Dr. Crawl? Present. Mrs. Lehman? Here. Mr. Neely? Here. Mr. Roth? Here. And Mr. Red? Here. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, on this meeting, we're going to move right into action items, so I will accept a motion to approve the minutes of the April 25th, 2023 regular meeting and closed session. I move that we approve the April 25th, 2023 meeting minutes as presented. I'll second. Dr. Cross? Yes. Mr. Rudd? Yes. Mr. Breaker? Yes. Dr. Crawl? Yes. Mrs. Lehman? Yes. Mr. Neely? Yes. And Mr. Roth? Yes. We have received the canvas election results from the county clerk's office. We need a motion to attest that the tabulation and the canvassing of the election are complete and the election results are true and accurate, accounting of all votes cast in the April 4th election, seating David Cross, Amanda Lehman, Andrew Roth to four-year terms, and myself to a two-year term on the Morton Community School District 709 Board of Education. I move that we accept the canvas election results as a true and accurate accounting of all votes cast in the April 4th, 2023 election and officially seating David Cross, Amanda Lehman, Andrew Roth, and Tim Breaker to their newly elected terms of service. Second. Give us a second. Yeah. All right. Mr. Rudd? Yes. Mr. Neely? Yes. Mr. Roth? Yes. Mr. Breaker? Yes. Dr. Cross? Yes. Dr. Crawl? Yes. And Mrs. Lehman? Yes. Congratulations on your election to another term of service. Each of you has already recited the oath of office in public. Please review it as, it, as you begin your next term of service. I'd like to also say congratulations and thank you for serving. You know, it's a sacrifice to even do one term as a board member, and you know that but to step up and, and to do a second term is just so much appreciated. So I appreciate the sacrifice you've given to your community and I look forward to working with you again in the next term. So congratulations. Let's see if you can say that in four years. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion to adjourn this meeting, CNA DA. I move that we adjourn the meeting, CNA DA. We'll second it. Dr. Crawl? Yes. Mrs. Lehman? Yes. Mr. Breaker? Yes. Dr. Cross? Yes. Mr. Neely? Yes. Mr. Roth? Yes. And Mr. Red? Yes. So did I pass my Latin test? You did fabulous. <laughs> I lost the bet on that one. <laughs> <laughs> We will now call our May 9th, 2023, second regular meeting to order. Okay. Here we go. Did the other one close? All right. Mr. Breaker. Here. Dr. Cross. Present. Dr. Crawl. Present. Mrs. Lehman. Here. Mr. Neely. Here. Mr. Roth. Here. And Mr. Red. Here. With that, we will move on to the organization of the board. Can I have a motion to declare Dr. Craig Smock as president pro tem for the purpose of nominations and voting for the office of president? I nominate Dr. Craig Smock to the office of president pro tem of the Board of Education. Support. Mr. Red? Yes. Dr. Cross? Yes. Mr. Roth? Yes. Mr. Breaker? Yes. Dr. Crawl? Yes. Mrs. Lehman? Yes. And Mr. Neely? Yes. Okay, our first order of business is the position of president of the school board. Do we have a nomination for the office of president of Morton 709 Board of Education? I nominate Tim Breaker to the office of president of the Board of Education. Okay. 
Are there any other nominations? Okay, hearing none, I declare the nominations closed, and there being no other nominations, this motion does not require a second. So Mr. Breaker is declared president uh, by acclamation. Valerie, please call the roll. Hey, Mr. Neely. Yes. Mr. Roth. Yes. Mr. Rudd. Yes. Mr. Breaker. Yes. Dr. Cross. Yes. Dr. Crawl. Yes. And Mrs. Lehman. Yes. The next order of business is to elect the vice president. So do I have a motion for the nomination for the office of vice president of the Morton 709 Board of Education? I nominate David Cross as vice president. Are there any other nominations? If not, I declare the nominations closed. This being there are no other nominations, this most the motion does not require a second. David Cross is declared vice president by acclamation. Valerie, please call the roll. Mr. Rudd. Yes. Mrs. Lehman. Yes. Mr. Neely. Yes. Mr. Roth. Yes. Mr. Breaker. Maybe at best. <laughs> Dr. Cross. Abstain. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Crawl. Yes. I'm going to assume those were really yeses. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> We'll now move on to electing the board secretary. Do we have a nomination for the office of the secretary of the Morton 709 Board of Education? I nominate Jerry Redd to the office of secretary of the Board of Education. Are there any other nominations? I declare the nominations closed. There being no other nomination, this motion does not require a second. Jerry Rudd is declared by secretary by acclamation. Valerie, please call the roll. Dr. Cross. Yes. Dr. Crawl. Yes. Mrs. Lehman. Yes. Mr. Neely. Yes. Mr. Roth. Yes. Mr. Rudd. Yes. And Mr. Breaker. Yes. We'll now set the time and place of the regular meetings. Um, the board members agree to hold the regular Board of Education meetings for the 20, 23, 24 year on the first and third Tuesday of each month. The first meeting of the month is at 5.30 p.m. The second meeting of the month is at 7 p.m. at the Morton Education Administration Center, unless otherwise announced. So, now is the time set aside for audience presentations. This is the only time set aside for audience presentations. The Board of Education will take all presentations under consideration and respond at the latest by the end of the next regular Board of Education meeting. Please limit your comments to five minutes. Participants are expected to conduct themselves with civility and respect and follow the guidelines outlined in the board policy. Is there anyone here that would care to address the board this evening? With that, we will move on to reports, starting with the superintendent report. Okay, I have several things to talk about today. And one of the couple of very exciting things, some uh, student recognition. To share with you, we'll start with eighth grade volleyball. So I think they're going to make their way in here. Eighth grade volleyball. I'll call uh, uh, Mr. Scott Hammond to the podium once again this year to introduce uh, some of our athletes and coaches and talk about the season that they've had. Thank you. Um, well, I think it's safe to say we've had an extremely successful season as far as athletics are concerned at the junior high. Um, I've got the pleasure of talking about the eighth grade volleyball team who, um, you know, through the course of the season, uh, played extremely, extremely well, um, finished the regular season undefeated, I believe, no, one, one loss. Undefeated, I, I get the two mixed up. Yeah, undefeated. Um, and then, um, you know, it culminated with the, uh, with the winning of the fourth place state trophy, um, which we actually hosted the state tournament this year for eighth grade. So um, just adding, you know, the pressure of, of the girls and the coaching staff, knowing we're hosting state and knowing the expectation that, uh, you know, they would be at the tournament we're hosting, you know, that's just another layer of pressure that, that this team had kind of put onto them. And, um, you know, they answered the call and they were able to make it to state, able to make it to the second day of state, which is, which is saying something as well. And, um, you know, 
even though we've had a bunch of teams make it this year, every single one of them has been special, of course, including this team. And, um, you know, it's just a, a testament to, again, the coaching staff, the program as a whole, this uh, particular group of girls, and, um, you know, how hard everyone is willing to work and the amount of time and dedication they're willing to put into it. Um, and I also think it's safe to say that the volleyball program, both at the junior high and at the high school, has a very, very bright future with, uh, you know, everything that they were able to accomplish this year. Um, so uh, now I'll bring up Mr. Uh, Williams, Coach Williams, and he will talk about the team and highlight some things for the season and talk about the girls. Thank you. All right, truly did take a village, like he said. Um, so we want to recognize some of the other people that had important parts of our success. Um, our admin is always willing to host, like he said. We hosted seventh grade postseason, eighth grade state, and just that ability to, to host things at our school gives us uh, a home court advantage, and um, it's awesome to have that gym over there. Um, our assistant coach, Emma Odom, who you guys saw last week, or a few, a few meetings ago um, for the, the state Championship was seventh grade. Um, we agreed on a practice model that allowed us to coach both grades, so it wasn't just a seventh grade co coach and an eighth grade coach. Um, so when she came in and started out this year, we agreed on that. It, it allowed us to coach both teams and just helped us on our success. Uh, we have the high school coaches, Tyler Matson and Hannah Newkirk. Um, they came in almost every single day and went straight from our practice to their own club practice or training, and they still maintain straight A's, and so just awesome kids to have in the, in the gym with us. Uh, we had some incredibly supportive and helpful parents this season to be able to run all that postseason stuff and host everything. They were volunteering constantly um, and then also supportive of the team and the coaches and it was just made for an awesome experience. Um, and our board and admin for a lot of decisions to help improve the quality of experience. Uh, it's always interesting to go to other places and see the difference and uh, some of the things the girls get to, to see at other schools and just it's much appreciated for, for how things get ran here in Morton. Uh, and then finally, our team. Um, just highlighting some of their success for, throughout the, the last two years. Uh, they had back-to-back -back state appearances. They went to state in seventh grade and then placed in eighth grade. Uh, like uh, Mr. Hammond said, they were undefeated for the regular season, uh, going into the last day of the season undefeated as well. Um, our first loss was to the only other team left in state that was undefeated as well. Uh, they did not drop a single set in the month of February. Uh, Morton was the only 4A program to have both 7th and 8th grade teams advance to state, uh, and both teams won state trophies. Um, the first team in our school history to go to state both years, um, first time with both grades at state, and the highest school record, uh, kind of and tying the highest place for 8th grade um, in the state tournament. They handled the postseason adversity that was with some injuries and just some uh, opponents we had to go through and grew in their self-confidence over the last two years. Um, they're awesome role models so much that when I would get home at night, my girls would argue over which one they got to play and their, their little make-believe games at night. Uh, they'd play balloon volleyball back and forth and they'd argue over which kid got to, they got to be um, just because they looked up to them so much and just awesome kids to have in the gym and have around. So I'm excited for the next four years to have a lot of them uh, come into volleyball and the ones that are active in volleyball are going to do an awesome job too. Just great, well-rounded group of girls. So we'll, we'll go ahead and recognize them. Um, and they'll go around and shake hands with everybody. Uh, so we'll go kind of in numbered order here. A few of them couldn't be with us. Uh, Ali Munez, Claire, Claire Sarisa, Izzy Ripka, and this is Leah Kemp. <laughs> Brennan Cowley. Congratulations. Riley Herman. Awesome. Rebecca Stock. Peyton Hayes. Abby Van Minen. Jessica Knapp. Ashton Allers. Haley Johnson. Paige Selke. Elizabeth Newkirk. Coach Emoto. Okay, you're yeah. setting that part yeah. up. to the high school next year. We're looking forward to what they can do at that level. 
Uh, we, in addition to volleyball, we have uh, some of other state competitors with us tonight. Our Skills USA competition was uh, about a week or so ago, and we had several students compete. I shared that list with you in the Potter Post. And out of those competitors, we had people rise to the, the very top, to gold, silver, and bronze medal uh, performances. And I just, uh, I just want to say a few words before I turn it over to uh, Ms. Zadolfson, associate principal at the high school. She's gonna say a few things, but I'm just so proud of the program and everyone that's behind it. We have several teachers that are here today. Clark is here, Ingerson, and uh, Tiffany Beard and Chad McFarland weren't able to be here uh, today. But you know, our whole entire program has just grown incredibly. It's been recognized in the state. Um, Mrs. Beard was recognized as a sponsor in the state, and we're just so proud of uh, everyone that's been involved in it. And so tonight is kind of the culmination of that, and we're going to get to talk to and maybe ask some questions of some of the participants. But I will now turn things over to Mrs. Adolfson. You guys welcome to see anything. So I'm just going to kind of give you a little overview of Skills USA before we get to the kids. Um, skills USA is a partnership of students, teachers, and industry working together to ensure America has a skilled workforce. Their mission statement reads, Skills USA empowers its members to become world-class workers, leaders, and responsible American citizens. We improve the quality of our nation's future skilled workforce through the development of Skills USA framework skills that include personal, workplace, and technical skills grounded in academics. Our vision is to produce the most highly skilled workforce in the world, providing every member the opportunity for career success. So when you look at their framework, they really focus on things like integrity, work ethic, uh, responsibility, being flexible, self-motivation, communication, uh, planning, leadership, management, and teamwork. Two weeks ago, like Mr. Smock said, we had 19 MHS students attend the State Leadership Conference, which is Illinois' elite career competition, with over 2,000 students attending from across the state and competing in over 130 different areas of career and technical competition. Students were able to compete and showcase their skills in front of industry partners that were looking to hire them. This year, we had students competing in carpentry, automotive maintenance and light repair, diesel equipment technology, heavy equipment operators, robotics search and rescue, additive manufacturing, CNC three-axis milling programmer, firefighting, commercial SUAS drone, and collision repair technology. So we're going to go over some of the real highlights um, with Mr. Um, Ingerson coming up here, but just want to say that we're super proud of the growth that we've seen, but also the dedication, not only from our students and our staff, but community partnerships willing to come in and work with us, um, including Auto Bomb Company, Lighthouse, Buick GMC, Caterpillar Building KK, Mort Collision Repair Inc., the Peoria Firefighters Explorers, Post 50, Peoria Illinois Fire Department, and then also Deer Creek Illinois Fire Department. So without them, a lot of these things wouldn't have been possible. And so is their added support that helped us gain so much success this year. So I'm going to introduce Clark Emerson. Hello. Well, I'm uh, proud to just be a very small part of this program uh, and to represent Chad McFarland tonight and Tiffany Beard, who have done a substantial job helping out and uh, being great advisors to these young students. Um, I'd like to recognize uh, Landon uh, Berkey and Andrew Croft for their uh, accomplishment as first place in the SUAS drone, commercial drone competition. Um, Andy Zeithammer uh, did a great job uh, placing second in the automotive maintenance and light repair. Uh, he has also qualified to compete at the national level. Uh, I believe they just got some uh, tickets to Atlanta for that, so that will be pretty exciting. Uh, Emma Belsley and, of course, uh, Ethan Cross in their uh, adaptive manufacturing uh, competition, their third place, uh, you know, third placement in that competition. It was very impressive overall. Um, I think uh, everybody who attended would agree it was an overwhelmingly neat event with just, it was hard to keep your eyes on any one event. There was so much going on, so many really neat competitions, and to have us be part of that was, it was very uh, well, it was very rewarding, and we got to see the fruits of our labor and uh, be represented by some of the best students, you know, in the area. So it was a really great experience for all of us, and we look forward to uh, promoting this in the future, getting more involvement, and uh, maybe including even some more different areas in the competition coming up in the future. So, so th these are our uh, our award winners here that we have brought with us tonight. 
So we're very proud to uh, present them to you and for their accomplishments. So. Well, we would like to shake their hands and congratulate them. Thank you. We will. Still, oh, we still get yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. I watched you fly that drone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you were guys. Congratulations. Yeah. 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 Congratulations. Yeah. 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 Okay, we yeah. Thank you. you promised the board that they would get a chance to ask you some questions. Okay, board members, what questions do you have for our Skills USA competitors? Can you explain um, what additive manufacturing is in yeah. people terms for us, please? Yeah, so basically it's kind of like whenever companies come out with products, they need like prototyping and eventually they're trying to get it into actually building the models through like 3D modeling. So we had a problem with like making a kinematic system that would solve a problem and then we had to 3D design that and then print it out and like post process it to make sure it worked. So as you were flying the drone and you did great, but when something went wrong and it hit the floor, how did you maintain your cool and come back so well? Well, it's mainly trusting him to be able to fix my mistakes. He I crashed multiple times and he had spare parts in his pocket that he was able to I, I was able to rely on him to be able to go and get back in the air again. And also his directions were extremely helpful for especially with depth perception, which was not really present on the drone. Well you guys did great. It was fun to watch and what about you giving those directions? Did you have to try different paths, or did he pick it up real quick? So at first, I guess I wasn't really exactly sure what it, to tell him, but I feel like as we went through the competition, we learned very fast and adapted to just learning how to manage all different parts of the competition. And when you had to look through the camera and see what was well, in that special spot, whatever that it might have been. Are you, do you know what I'm referring to? Yes. Can you tell the board about that experience? So the camera is, it's, it's pretty small because it's on a small drone and has to be able to lift off in the air. And especially with the lighting in there, we would, I would need to call out what color I thought I would see and confirm it related to him. And he would tell me exactly if I was right or wrong. And then he would direct me to the panels because we had to land, whatever color we saw in that panel, we had to land on the corresponding platform. And so he would confirm that I had seen the right color and he would direct me to the correct platform. Okay. So as an observer, we didn't know that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Great job to all of you. Thank you. What task were you required to do on your automotive side uh, for competition? It was mostly simple diag uh, on a on a in a test format. It was mostly just technician A believes a loose sway bar end link is causing sway, and technician B thinks it's the suspension uh, lower control arm has gone out, and we just had to differentiate between who would be the correct technician. Uh, and there were a couple other. Where it was just parts identification and a simple uh, multi point vehicle inspection that we had to perform. Emma Avery wanted to know if you made any friendships. Yeah, it was it was really a big part of the experience that was fun was like meeting the other people from other schools too that were all like coming together working on like same stuff and even seeing the people in the different competitions and it was just really interesting to get to meet all sorts of people, different interests. Dr. Smoxon, did you send the video out in the Potter Post or our update? 
Uh, probably probably in the, but anyway, he sent a video out of kind of flyovers of that event and just there was a lot that went into it. It was neat stuff. And I'm in the construction business, so I know there's a definite opportunity and need for skilled trades. And so it's awesome that you guys are involved in it. And so I just want to mention real quick that there was a lot of help from a lot of different people, but I forgot to mention uh, Tony Crown, Nicole Friend, Chris Garner, and John Hendricks from the high school who all helped out with the, all the there's a lot to putting this all together and getting everybody in the right place at the right time. And uh, for the people who attended, it was a widespread event. So getting everybody there when they needed to be and competing was uh, was definitely a group effort. So. But there were 2,000 competitors this year. And uh, so to place where we did out of that, two th that field of 2,000 is incredible. So. Covered all of Illinois? All over Illinois. And from what I understand, uh, I think Civic Center has that contract for the next several years, so we'll be uh, close to home, you know, so that's that's nice for us to uh, to attend and get as many participants in there as possible. So. And I think there are plans to widen our scope as far as what we compete in and include a lot of other members of our uh, CTE you know, department as well as, uh, you know, other play other uh, instructors in the building. So other questions. So, you all had challenges. You all sounds like you had a little bit of adversity that you overcame, succeeded, which is awesome. So that's a huge congratulations. Now, my question to each one of you, and only one has to answer, that you guys are on top. How are you going to mentor the underclassmen to get to where you're at? Well, I'm a senior, so. <laughs> <laughs> wow. They're on their own. <laughs> Is there anything that you can do to leave something behind so younger kids will start doing what you're doing? Uh, I, I personally plan to come back to the high school later on and help mentor a couple of the kids for the FFA and record book competitions that come up every year and help, main, help them maintain the record book and make sure it's at the highest level that they can put in. Awesome. And also this year being the first <laughs> also, this year being the first year that we competed in the engineering side of this competition, there was a lot we didn't know going into the competition, just like overall format of the competition. And so I think after this year, knowing those things, being able to pass them on will help prepare future years much better than we would. Good job. Other questions? So what's next? So some of you qualified. For nationals, who I qualified for nationals, so. and we be able to go. Uh, what, where is it at? Uh, it's in Atlanta, Georgia, this year. Okay. So we would plan on heading down there and just uh, see what see what it's like, see how well I do. Hopefully for podium. Okay. Outstanding. And if, and if Andy uh, looks familiar, you you might have seen his picture in the Potter post for signing on to Lighthouse Automotive, right? So congratulations on that also. All right, well, thank you very much for being with us tonight. It's just uh, so thrilling for us to see the fruits of all those labors and you're such a huge part of that. And hopefully you've grown in, in that process and I can tell that you have. So thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Great thank All right, we have a few other things to talk about. Um, <laughs> Mrs. Adolfson mentioned community partnerships, which were involved in the Skills USA uh, program. A lot of people, a lot of hands in that. And I'll tell you, looking, going to the Civic Center and seeing the magnitude of what is there, it does require a lot of people to be involved in it. So we appreciate those partnerships. Also want to thank the Morton Mentors Program. We have several partners with that program where community members take a student of ours kind of under their wing, take them into their business, uh, have meetings with them and get them, let them experience a little bit about what that business is about. I don't have the full, I'm not going to share the full list, but I am going to share the full list in my Potter post on Friday. So on Friday, I intend to thank everyone that was involved in that program publicly and listing all the students involved and uh, their mentor partners and the businesses that they're associated with. So you'll see that on, on Friday. 
So we're thankful for that partnership as well. Uh, a couple of just updates. Uh, some Several weeks back, we talked about the MHS grade point average discussion, and that's something we haven't quite finished yet. Again, so it's, it's something we're working on. Our goals are fairness to students, clarity, and how do you transition from what we've had before into something new if we do change what we do. So those are a few things that we're, we're working on. And of course, an overarching goal to that is not to have any students be harmed in the process. So those are tall orders for uh, changing a grade point average, I can tell you. But I just wanted you to know that we haven't forgotten that discussion. That's something we're still working on. Also, something we're working on is a little bit about hospitality. Dr. Kral shared uh, some of that with us a few meetings a couple weeks ago when she talked about you know, what are we doing to be hospitable to our guests that come into our schools. And that's a question that we're asking ourselves and we're going to have some answers for that. We already, there are several things I'm discovering that we do that helps our guests come into our buildings, letting them know where things are, pictures of things, directions, and there's some things I think we can improve upon. So I'll come back with more information about that, but just wanted you to know that's a discussion in process as well. I um, wanted to let you know that on, on the next meeting, I think we're going to talk about uh, the March or the May 23rd meeting, but the June 6th meeting, uh, I, we are going to do a thorough report on student data collection and reporting. So test scores, attendance, discipline, what, what are we keeping track of, how are we using the information, what infor how are we using the academic assessments, when are the, all the tests, and how do we use the information from those tests to inform our instruction, our curriculum, how do we tweak things. Um, so you're going to see a pretty thorough report on June 6th that's going to talk about that. As you know, as you know that's part of the responsibilities of a Board of Education is to monitor how we're doing. So we're going to talk about what are those instruments that we're using to monitor. So that's on June 6th. The last thing I have is really um, is about Care You. This being one of the, the final board meetings of the year, I wanted to let you know we got some great feedback on Care You. And for those that don't know, uh, our, our coordinator, our student wellness coordinator, Stephanie Brown, who, who we've heard from, and Don Sturm have been very involved throughout the whole year with a kind of an initiative called Care You. And it's been multifaceted. One facet was a book study that we did for parents. And we had 15 parents uh, sign up for a book study. It's the book, The Gifts of Imperfection. And those parents really dug into this. And they went through they had several sessions where they met in this building, talked about the chapters they'd read, shared back and forth with one another. And what I've provided to, to the Board of Education is just the uh, results of a survey that we did with those parents. Okay, so what did you think of this book study and, and should we do it again? So I'm, I'm not going to read the whole, all of it to you, but I'm going to read some excerpts from that um, that they got. I think eight out of the 15 parents took the survey. And on the first page of it, you can just see that overall they thought 100% of them strongly agreed that the book study was very valuable to them. And if you look on the second page, again, I'm not going to read it all, but just a few excerpts. One question that we asked our parents, what did you learn from the Care You book study? And you see answers like, the district cares about our kids so much that they're investing more in the caregivers. This book spoke to me in big ways. Just dig it into what, really, what it really means to try to live wholeheartedly and be authentic and resilient. There's so much benefit in, in talking to other caregivers who are in the same stages of life and in different stages of life, comparing and contrasting approaches to parenting that help out, or I'm sorry, that help put my own approaches into perspective. Another question that was asked was, what did you change about your parenting mindset after completing the book? And there's several responses to that. One was, I give, my, I give more compliments to my daughter. Another was, I have used the book as discussion starters around the dinner table and in the car. The group discussions showed me that I'm not alone. And someone said, it helped me feel validated and gave me strength through connection. And the final question of the survey was, if you were in an elevator with another caregiver, what would you say about the book? 
And you can see responses like, this book shares some basic concepts that can help you focus on behavior and treat yourself and others more lovingly. It's a non-judgmental self-help book. Um, one parent said, embrace the silly dance parties and the dirty shoes from playing in the park and being too messy for a magazine house. Um, there are moments when they are intentional and focused on your family that your kids will, will remember. By practicing authenticity rather than perfectionism, we are our best for ourselves and others around us. It's a book that helps you dig deep on living a more authentic life and truly trying to live wholeheartedly. And then the last one I'll share is, I would tell them it's a life changer. So we had some great responses back on the book study. Pretty sure we're gonna do another one next year. Hopefully it'll grow even beyond what it was. And at the end of the results, you can also see they shared some statistics about their podcast. So they do a bi-weekly podcast. And again, they'd be here, if they were able to be here tonight, they'd be reporting neither one of them were available. So, but in their podcast, you can see some statistics there, the top five listened episodes, and just the fact that they've had over 1,100 hits on their podcasts for the year. So kudos to them for their hard work. They really invented these things themselves. They had great ideas. I was just able to support them and say yes. And, you know, to, to navigate things with parents and talking about how to parent is a tricky thing. And they were able to do that without coming across judgmental, just getting parents talking and thinking about ways to be reflective in their own parenting. They just did a phenomenal job with that. So I wanted to thank them for all the work they did, but also thank the Board of Education for investing in the position that we hired Stephanie Brown into. And I could talk all day long about the amazing things that she's done in that role, things that I never expected we would ever do. She has done, and she's made a great impact. Um, so we're going to continue with many of these things next year, and I just want to give you a report on that. <clears throat> Any questions? Uh, here you broadcast. I've said that before. A lot of good stuff there. So if you haven't listened to it, I would encourage it. Yeah, you can go back and listen to the previous non shaming way, that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're all still out there. You can dig down in there and find the old episodes. And All right, that concludes my report for this evening. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the president's report. Um, just uh, another shout out to the Skills USA teams that went and competed and also the eighth grade volleyball. It's neat to see the success that we're having as a district. And Skills USA, I think, is just fantastic because I think it definitely supports the shift for everybody had to go to college. Now there's, we're teaching kids that there's many other opportunities out there that if they don't want to attend a secondary education. So I think it couldn't be prouder of the, how far it's come. So. Um, the, uh, we have graduation in June, or May 20th. Looking forward to that. Um, we have a policy committee coming up. When is that? I lost my cheat sheet you gave me. Okay, no, we need to set it to kind of look at 111, okay. so, so soon. You guys can get that set, but there will be a policy committee coming up. And on our June 6th meeting, we're gonna restructure our committee. So if anybody has any committees they wanna be on or they wanna be off of or whatever, but, uh, Dr. Smock and myself know, and we'll do our best to accommodate. Um, Valerie pointed out that the sign up for the Illinois Association of School Board is already opened up on June, so we need to let her know if we plan to attend. And that's in November, and you. Same, yeah, same time in November. I'll send out the dates. I think I sent out the dates already, but yes, just let me know if you plan because the rooms go. So we want to, don't want to miss it, do we, Tom? The, uh, and we're also going to cancel our May 23rd board meeting, which is two weeks from today. So that meeting will be canceled. Need more information coming up on a follow up on that. And I think that's all I had for my report. Um, any items for agenda building? My agenda building item for tonight is that I think I want, I talked to Dr. Smock a little bit about this, but I want to, we should over look at their, all of our extracurricular activities and just see if they support our board goals and 
help the students achieve their main goal, which is be the education portion of it. And I think some just over just look at all of them just to see are they supporting the kids? Is there good kind? Is there a good communication between the the parents, the students, and the staff? And just if there's a way we can set a maybe a policy of what our expectations are, what what is our goal? If we're gonna whatever, if we're gonna play basketball or we're going to have a band what is the expectation is it a trophy or is it to grow kids or is it both and i think just maybe just trying to focus in on that and set some real goals so everybody understands what our expectations are so what are you thinking in terms and then some measurables if they're possible yeah. i think so yeah and, just try to set try and find ways to measure have something in writing that says this is what our expectation is and I, our main goal is to educate students. And if a program or something does not help push a student to be better, then why are we doing it? So. To circle back to Skills USA, which is a program, one of the things, this, as you pointed out, was our first year, but you could see the schools that this might have, they have been there in prior mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. And to your question, it's really going to be good when we can pass on to the next group of students yes. what to expect as you go through this. And it was amazing to watch schools that wasn't their first rodeo. They, so. That's a great point. And even our sponsors, you know, for them, it was a big learning curve. Some of these areas are not things that they teach on a daily basis. So they had to find resources and outside community partners to, to help them through that. So as they learn also, that's going to help us a lot. So it's, it'll be amazing to see what we can achieve once we're all kind of up to speed and we really know what to expect walking in there. It's a great point. The, uh, the labor I, shortage creates a market for everybody's willing to get involved because yeah. they want to solve the labor shortage. So 10 years ago, you would have said you want to... Most employers probably said, nah, not so much. Now everybody's interested in getting involved, so it's a great time to. And I think outside of just kids who might be going into trades, not going to college, like, so Ethan worked with Emma. And so, like, what did Emma do to pass on? Like, she invited a ninth grader to be her partner and do the additive manufacturing with her. And um, so my son just loved, like, the whole thing because it, they did this 3D rendering stuff, and it's like kind of computer and using 3D printer, and like he he just loved it. Um, I, and he probably will go to college. I ain't gonna make him, but my guess is he will. But it still gives him this like real world application of you know engineering, coding, like solving the problem, doing 3D rendering that is just awesome. And that he just he thought of the whole experience he absolutely loved. That was great. Uh, as we put together the different extracurriculars for students, you know, keeping their, our overarching goal is challenging all to achieve their highest potential. I think, you know, the Skills USA is giving our faculty more opportunity to challenge kids in areas they may not have explored before and then you know thinking about how some of these academic skills can they we can challenge kids to translate them into real life sooner um, and then even from the sports side how can we challenge every single student on a team to achieve their highest potential, recognizing those are different goals for each student. Um, but we do that all the time academically, as Lindsay and um, Dr. Teeter show us. So I like the idea of you know, seeing, well, where does the um, hypothetical meet experience? And I would just re remind us all that, you know, the skills that they're learning isn't really just about those skills, but it's about, it's, it's really social emotional learning. Mm -hmm. They're getting a glimpse of their futures. They're doing something today that applies to potential future of theirs. They're working together as team, as a team. They're socializing through it. 
And so the benefits even even go beyond just the skills they're learning. It, it's really, I, I think, the future focus part of that is, is critical to social emotional learning. So it's got so many, it's so multifaceted. There's so many great benefits to it. So we're going to keep growing it and do even better mm-hmm. next year. Good. To the point that you just made, this is for kids going to college and or that's going to work in a trade and the skills they learn from one another and share with one another. It's amazing how they learn from one another. I mean, to your point, so yeah, I mean, even the real world, like they go there, they like this is the problem that we thought. This is the machine we designed to fix it. This is how you have to print it. Then have someone judge it, like, well. Can, can they had to reproduce it like on a 3D printer there and was it reproducible and like so like in real times like you take this your boss gives you this project and then you solve it and you give it back and your boss says that stinks that's not re- like I mean it's like real like it's like real feedback of of your work and like that's just good life experience right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. what I like is there's more involvement because not like you said not every kid's going to go to college but like these trade schools you're going to be involved in something, and if you're not involved in something at school, you're going to get involved in something that you shouldn't be involved in. <laughs> this is, I think, huge. Experience. Mm-hmm. 100%. <laughs> Tim, I think that's good what you said, and I think just with the Skills USA and the sports and all the other extracurriculars, just to have a common mission. Mm-hmm. Of why we're doing what we're doing, why we have those activities. Yeah, as we were talking about it, the idea of like a handbook or mission statement or belief statements, something that can that can have uh, permanence to it, something that would give new coaches like this is what we're about. We're not about the wins and losses. If you do these things, wins and lo- wins will come, right? Um, and to convey that, you know, we've we've hired several coaches lately. And those are the, communi- the conversations that we had at this table when we were interviewing them, is what's really important, important to us. We asked a lot of questions about there being a good role model and what are the priorities. One of the questions we ask is, if someone's in your program for four years, what should they have gotten out of it? And so those are the kind of things that are important to us, but you know, having a broader conversation about it with board members, coaches, athletic directors, other administrators, and, and really put it in writing so that we, we can outlive us, I think, is a, is a great goal. So if that's what you have in mind for that, like sort of a handbook, mission statement, then uh, I think that's a tangible way to accomplish that goal. <clears throat> I don't want to lose sight of a point you made. I kind of want to accentuate it. It's a team. Our parents, our teachers, our coaches, and everybody working together, and everybody's accountable. Isn't that the expectation? I mean, teachers, yep. coaches, and everybody needs to know what the expectations are. That's right. Right. Yep. Because everybody, can, all parties can improve. Mm-hmm. So. All right, we will work on that. That we'll move on to discussion item. That's the board meeting calendar for 2023-24. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some discussion on that. I thought we already talked about that, but it's I was trying to make sure I read it right, so I wasn't paying board much board, attention. Yeah. So all I would say is, you know, we just think the board just agreed to essentially do first and third Tuesday. There's a lot of exceptions when you look on here, dodging holidays and Easter break and Thanksgiving and, uh, yeah, spring break. So, you know, it's this would be what we'd be moving forward with unless you see an issue with it. We'll approve that next meeting? Yeah, we can do that. Move on to action items. I need a motion to approve the administrator's reappointment and salary increases for 23 
it saw the increases for building administrators for the 2023 school I will support. Any discussion? Yes. These guys do a fantastic job, so you guys should feel lucky. Just want to say that out loud, so you guys do awesome that I... And most every of them are sitting go, behind the camera. So. Every time we go to a school, I get more and more impressed. So this is, this is mm -hmm. No, Taco, his comment is that the reality is, is what happens at the board table we, is just all policies and things like that. It takes the admin team to, to push our policies and ideas through. So we definitely appreciate the support. So. Yes, we had an important transition at the junior high and just from um, parents' perspective, I heard um, many positive comments about how well the students um, adjusted and that really day-to-day -day operations were just as good as usual, if not better. So, you know, that's kudos to um, Dr. Smock and um, Mr. Carter's leadership there. Dr. Cross. Yes. Mr. Rudd. Yes. Mrs. Lehman. Yes. Mr. Neely. Yes. Mr. Roth. Yes. Mr. Breaker. Yes. And Dr. Crawl. Yes. And in that approval, I would like to name everyone that we just rehired, if I could, and many of these, like you said, are with us today. Faith Waterfield from Letty Brown School. Michael Saunders from Grundy School. Kate Wyman from Jefferson. Uh, Julie Horsham from Lincoln. Bethany Scroggs, the assistant at Lincoln, was hired already, but we've got her on our list as well for next year. Chris Carter, Morton Junior High School principal. Scott Hammond, uh, Morton Junior High School assistant principal and athletic director. Deidre Ripka, high school principal. Scott Jones, Morton High School AD and assistant principal. Jamie Adolfson, Morton High School associate principal. Josh Pritchard, Morton High School assistant principal, along with Todd Herman, the other assistant and dean. Lindsey Franklin, director of student support services. Amanda Rickenberg, the assistant director of student support services and Morton Academy's principal. Uh, Dr. Troy Teeter, assistant superintendent, and Dr. Sander, our assistant superintendent. So congratulations that this is a fabulous team. I couldn't, uh, I could go on and on about the great job they do on the ground and. Things they do, we'll never know, um, and they're just fabulous to work with. Integrity beyond expectation, hard work, um, and just a great team to be with. So, about a round of applause for our administrators. As we head into the consent agenda, I just a couple things I wanted to say before we make a motion for that. Um, you'll see student fees on the list of things on the consent agenda. Just want to make the point that the Board of Education through this is not increasing any student fees going into next year. We're keeping them the same as they were the year before. And we're also not increasing lunch prices, although you might say that there's every indication that we should. And I just want to speak to that a little bit. Um, you know, most decisions that we make should be proactive. We should be planning, expecting, and then making decisions accordingly. I think this is one of those cases where we really want to be reactive, uh, which sounds kind of strange to say. But when you're talking about what we're charging our parents for meals, I think best it's best to proceed with the same lunch price that we had before. Even though we, are, we have expectations of inflation and many other things that we're going to have to deal with, we don't have the expectation of paying a for-profit organization to run it. So we think that's the wisest move forward is let's keep lunch prices the same. We'll do our analysis next year as we go through the year and see how we're doing. I think it's been said before at this table that lunch programs are not intended to be profit makers. They're intended to break even. So that's how we're going into this. Um, and I just wanted to make that point before we approve uh, fees for next year. The other, the other point I want to make is you also see there's some textbook approvals on this consent agenda. We have two of them. Just want to let you know we did not get any public feedback on those two books. So I think we should proceed. Any questions about those things? 
Okay. That will accept a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. I move that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Mr. Red? Yes. Dr. Kral? Um, I had a comment I thought I would make about that. Is this the time that's after? Well, I, I can say. Yeah, before yes. we go, have your I thought it was, yeah. we were supposed to have discussion. Um, as far as the textbook, I wanted to respond to that just a little bit. Um, I reviewed the AP World History textbook and agree and will vote, of course, that um, we approve that. But I think it is really important for our community and faculty um, to keep in mind that the AP um, organization really runs how the, the course material, the um, how the material is presented, and this textbook has multiple um, sample tests. So we really are kind of focusing more on our students getting the value of learning somewhat controversial topics um, to some of our families in, in the home here in Morton instead of on campus far away from their home, and that by voting for these textbooks to be approved, we're really voting for our students to have the material to be prepared for college credit, but we are not voting, or at least I personally, I should clarify that, I am not voting specifically that I'm in agreement with all of the philosophies that are presented in these AP textbooks. And I felt that was an important qualifier to make um, as a public servant and a voting board member. Sorry but, to interrupt the <laughs> motion to say that's, that. That's well said. And you made a great point there, Dr. Kroll, when you said some of the, the curriculum kind of starts to get out of our control when we're trying to give college credit for something. And I think mm -hmm. if we came across a, a curriculum that we were so uncomfortable with that we couldn't we couldn't have, be a part of it, we would just not have that AP course. We would just cancel that course if that's what we had to do. I don't think we're at that point, but you make a great point that there are gonna be philosophies and content that we may not be fully on board with. And it is good for, for parents to be aware that you know sometimes that is outside of our control. Just like we have kids going to Illinois Central College and they're, they're transferring credit back to us. And that, is, that curriculum is a little bit out of our control. Um, and this AP is an example of that as well. So that's a great point. Thank you for sharing that. Hopefully to go along with that as we make the um, curriculums more accessible <coughs> to parents, they can at least see what, if they see what's being taught in the course, and that's a good thing. So they go hand in hand. And I've quoted you many times saying, if you're gonna have questionable material, it's better to do it while they're at home than they're away at college if you want to influence the outcome of it. So, another one, is, any other further discussion? Let's start over at the roll, if you would, please. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Red? Yes. Dr. Kral? Yes. Mrs. Lehman? Yes. Mr. Neely? Yes. Mr. Roth? Yes. Mr. Breaker? Yes. And Dr. Cross? Yes. That will accept a motion to enter closed session to discuss the purchase and sale of property, personnel, and student discipline. So moved. Look forward. Dr. Cross and Mr. Neely. All right. Dr. Cross. Yes. Mr. Neely. Yes. Dr. Crawl. Yes. Mrs. Lehman. Yes. Mr. Roth? Yes. Mr. Red? Yes. And Mr. Breaker? Yes. With that, we'll take five minutes to turn out.